seriously, all the other like van life people, RV life people that I've watched on YouTube, I feel like there's not one that I know of that did this in less than at least minimum a year. To liquidate their lives and do this life, either a van, a sailboat, or an art, a motorhome. Um, and here I'm doing it in like, at this point it was like 45 days. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> okay, let's go see how the new love of my life did overnight. Good morning, El Dorado. Let's just go check it out. Oh, I cannot wait to be living inside of here. <laughs> Hello, good morning. Oh my gosh, I am so madly in love with this area of the RV, it's insane. Within five minutes of looking at the interior of this thing, I'm like, oh my god, I need a whole new roof. <laughs> I need a whole new roof. So I turn it back on, I drive it around the block a few times, and I'm like, dude, this thing runs, like, I'm gonna be fine. The engine's in the inside, so if the day I have to move, if, you know, I break down two days later, I can work on the engine in a Walmart parking lot. The engine's on the inside of this thing, so why not utilize the space I have in this house? So I pulled the RV in the backyard. <laughs> This is where it gets fun. Pull it into the backyard and start re-roofing it. I just start working day in, day out on this thing. Mind you, while I'm re-roofing this RV, I had to fix my brakes on my Bronco that were currently shot. So I had tires off, bleeding brake lines, trying to figure that out, trying to figure out my tailgate window, like getting the Bronco fixed, getting the RV fixed, getting those two cars painted, getting one of them sold, selling all my stuff, going through so much crap, like, six and a half years of stuff and pretty much a lifetime worth of stuff because I wasn't keeping anything. All I kept was this office chair. <laughs> office chair's not going anywhere, okay? I made a lot of decisions in this chair and I was like, it's, it's not going. Um, my dad came down because it's coming down to the point now, I need to figure out what I'm gonna do for electricity and water. I'd ripped out all the interior tanks. They were too big. They were like 150 gallons each, just, I, I want to do solar, I, so I ripped everything to shards. I thought I had common sense before I bought this RV. So the first thing my dad does is open up the radiator cap, check out the fluids, right? <laughs> he opens it, it's just sludge, just dirty sludge water. I'm like, oh my God, let's forget about the radiator. Let's give this thing a full like flush. Part of that process is you turn the vehicle on. And so we flush it one, go to turn it on, thing doesn't start nothing zero like not even a like rev nothing <laughs> okay that's a battery problem pick up a new battery put it in there nothing my dad looks at me <laughs> and I'm like oh my god I have to be out here in like two weeks <laughs> I don't have any power I don't have any water and now I don't run I look at my dad and I'm like you know what I went to sell my Bronco, it didn't feel right. Something didn't feel right. My guts told me don't do this. And I was like, it was always supposed to be the Bronco. I was always supposed to take the Bronco across the country and pull a trailer. I'm like, all right, that's it. RV's out, Bronco's in. And so I just start tearing apart the Bronco. What do you think? So this would be the bed on top of the pelican because we can't part with pelican now and then build a piece of wood to go across right and then port beams what are you thinking like this whole i have two weeks what are you gonna do and i go back out to the rv and i'm like i gotta figure this out i don't have enough time i need somewhere to live start messing around with something it's not in park the Things not in park. I'm like what I put it in park the, the gauges were always broken since I bought it You couldn't you didn't know if you're in park reverse or whatever And it turns right on it turns right on. I'm like, oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god I have a home again. All right, we're back in business. Okay. I'm like, I'll just live in the RV until I sell it Continue to finish cuz like the roof the hatch isn't done So I get back to work on the RV and now it is just like down to the wire, I have to leave in a few days, right? And then I go and turn it on again to pull it out of the house to go get it smogged. It needs to be registered. It's on and on off. It can't be parked on a street anywhere. I go to pull it out. Again, doesn't start. I call the property management and I let them know at this point, it was what, the day before I had to be out of the house. And I say, 
Hey guys, I know I have to be out by Friday. What would you think about letting me have till Monday? I need to figure out how I'm gonna tow this RV off this property and where I'm gonna tow it to. Who's got room for my 22 foot RV, right? <laughs> I'm like, and I at this point need to decide, okay, am I putting money into the RV or am I putting money into the Bronco? So I'm not gonna like tow it to a mechanic shop. So I ask him for more time. She calls me back in the morning and she says, uh, no, they're not going to let you have any more time. You have to give us the keys by noon or we're going to go ahead and file the eviction. I'm like, okay, <laughs> so. All right. Looks like I'm getting an eviction on my record because I'm not leaving my home here. I don't know. I just sat down on the couch and gave up. Threw my hands up in the air. I'm like, that's it. I guess I'll just get an eviction on my record. And I know the lockout process. Um, well, I called my lawyer, he called me back, and he said, okay, well, you, do, you don't have to give him the keys by noon, you have till midnight tonight. And uh, he said, as long as you're out by midnight, you won't have an eviction. If you can't get out and you don't leave, then they'll file the eviction on Monday, and it could take anywhere from five days to five weeks to six months for the sheriff to come perform a lockout on you. Believe word for word, he said, for your future self, if you can do it, get out. And I said, all right, thank you. He was really cute, dude, a hot guy. <laughs> and I was like, thank you so much for your help and hung up the phone. And I was like, I'm staying. <laughs> like, oh, well, eviction on my record. Had a lot of other hurdles in life and eviction's not gonna kill me, right? <laughs> what are you gonna do? So I sat on the couch and think I cried a little bit. It's not like I'm waking up and not trying. I'm trying to get out and yes, I will be honest, I will be honest, I, I, I could probably try a little bit harder. And a huge part of me is telling me to like just do it, you know, Morgan, you're never going to be ready to leave your home. And so you just got to go. And um, I would ask like the universe, God, whatever, there's anything controlling any of this. I really hope that in the future, I get to have a place like this again, you know? But if this is the last time that I get to have anything like that, I'll tell you something. There was a, never a time that I took this place for granted. And I really enjoyed this house. I finally call my brother. My brother's so smart and so kind and he's called the solution person. I call my brother, I, I tell him all the tea, <laughs> what's going on. <laughs> he's like, dude, just get it off the property. Get the RV off the property. Tow it out of the backyard with your Bronco. Park it on the side of the house. We'll figure out what to do with it tomorrow or the next day. Like, just get it off the property. You can come up here, whatever you need to do. Just get it off the property. Get, get off the property, Morgan. And I'm like, all right, all right. I'm gonna get off the property. Okay, I'm gonna get off the property. Like I got so pumped from talking to him. It's now noon, right? <laughs> it's noon, I'm like, okay. I got 12 hours to get off this property. <laughs> you get goosebumps thinking about it, because I just, looking back, I'm kind of thankful it all happened that way because it didn't give me a chance to just be so sad about leaving. It's like, I gotta get out of the house. <laughs> so I grab my 550 pound rope, I tie it around the back of the RV, I get tied to my Bronco and I pull this motherfucking thing out of the backyard. Pull it onto the side of the house, which is way easier said than done when you're pulling with rope. <laughs> There's no turning happening. There were other cars parked on the street. It was a mess. So I had to pull this thing out, kind of this way, kind of go into someone's yard. And then I drove down the street, tried to drive around the block so it would be facing the right direction. <laughs> this way, right? I'm moving it to your house. Keep going. Keep going. <laughs> just a mess. Rope breaks. Put People push it. And just it was a mess. Finally get it parked on the side of the house. Remember, I'm in a non-op. I'm in a non-registered vehicle in San Diego where it is like Citation Nation. So I park it on the street on the side that doesn't have street sweeping, isn't really monitored, and is right next to all my neighbors that all support me and they're not gonna like call the cops saying like, hey, there's some random lady living in front of our house in an RV. <laughs> the cops are gonna knock in and say, I can't be sleeping in this thing, right? So I decided to stay next to the house. 
and uh, I just start throwing everything into the RV. It's amazing when you're moving out of a place how you think you have it all done and it's just not done. There's this, that, this, that, and I wanted to have integrity and I loved that house and even though I hated what was happening to me, I wanted to, yeah, wipe the hair off of the bathroom cabinets and make sure the bathrooms were clean and, and just do what I could, right? So I did all that and midnight came. The girl that worked at the property management showed up and she said, hey, like just put the key underneath the mat. I'll get it first thing in the morning. Like you can have the rest of the night. And so sweet of her. So that just like, oh. remember I don't have electricity. I still never got to know if the generator works. I don't have solar panels. I don't even know if I'm keeping the RV. I don't know if I'm keeping the bron Bronco. I don't know what the hell's going on. So I don't have any power. So I take the extension cord and I plug the power into the house and I just move into this thing for the rest of the night. Yeah, we slept in there. <laughs> And slept outside of the house that I'd just been kicked out of. The sun was coming up. I snuck into the backyard and pulled my extension cord out and sat in the RV and just kind of like waited to see for them to show up. Cause you know, like you just moved out, they're gonna show up, right? I'm waiting and they don't show up. And I'm like, oh, well it's Saturday. They'll probably come on Monday, right? So I decided to go ahead and plug my electricity, my extension cord back into the house. This is at this point like trespassing, but look, it was still my electricity, like in my name, right? I don't know, I'm just surviving. <laughs> I decide I don't wanna leave my RV and go stay at a friend's house because it's on a non-op. Like I need to be in this so it doesn't get towed and impounded for 30 days and cost $3,000 to get it out of impound, right? Like, oh, what a mess. <laughs> so we sleep in it, we're sleeping on a slant. I'll, I'll forever be traumatized by sleeping on a slant. Some person I don't even know there was a friend of a friend came and said, oh hey, I heard you're stranded, I know a thing or two about engines, and we got it to run. I, at this point, there's been so much that I don't remember what that exact issue was. <laughs> but we got it to turn on. It's running, yay, so we're celebrating. I go drink some wine with friends, I go to the beach and walk the dog as the sunset, do the thing. My neighbors are all being super sweet, everything's just like, okay. And uh, it's okay as it can be. <laughs> Monday comes. I'm like, okay, looks like I'm good to go. I hop in this thing, I say, I'm waving goodbye to my neighbors, I wait, I scream, bye house. I make it two blocks and I stall in the middle of the street. It's just hilarious. And now here I am back. At the end of the day, I'm back. My old gardeners just showed up to, go, to mow my old lawn and I just started laughing. like. Just tired. When the fire broke out in the engine, I w somehow whacked my hand. I know I'm stressed, but it's, there, this is just too funny. Middle of the week. How long have I been in this fucking thing now? Like five days. <laughs> I'm still parked out in front of my old house. They're still not working on it, so I'm still sneaking in and plugging in my electricity. My electricity still hasn't even turned off. Um, I know this is like the name of the game though, you know? I guess I just didn't think it was gonna happen so quickly out of the gate. Like, I'm not even out of the gate yet. Like, I'm still parked in front of the fucking house! Come on! Okay, last time I made it to the stop sign before I stalled. I'd need to do a little bit of like commentary. God, Morgan, <laughs> I burnt off all my eyelashes. Like I still have eyelashes, but they're just not long anymore. <laughs> and I, a lot of my eyebrows here, this is like some makeup. There was a fire. <laughs> Everything's okay.